Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Flywheel GoCo S722 flight controller and the ESC stack. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs and then show you how to install the stack on the Flywheel Mr. Croc HD frame and configure it using Betaflight. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller you can find the connection diagram and the bed that contains M3 spaces and screws and the harness that connects the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller. In terms of specs, the Flywheel GoCo F722 30x30mm stack is based on a 50 ampere bl 32 4-in-1 ESC and an F7 flight controller. The 4-in-1 ESC is running bl 32 firmware. It features pretty big motor and battery pads, 4 LEDs on its sides, a built-in current sensor, and in addition to this 8 pins connector, you can also find 10 soldering pads on its bottom, so in case this connector breaks, you can use them, but unfortunately Flywheel haven't labeled these pads yet. As for the F7 flight controller, it came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.06, it's running the Flywheel F7 dual firmware, its maximum input voltage is 50 volts, it features 6 free UART ports, in addition to the 4-in-1 ESC 8 pins connector, you can also find the matching pads on its top side, and it enables you to add an external gyro in addition to the built-in MPU6000 gyro chip. In terms of dimensions and weight, the weight of the 4-in-1 ESC on its own is 11.6 grams, the weight of the flight controller is 7.9 grams, and together, including the harness, they weigh 20.3 grams. The outer dimensions of the 4-in-1 ESC are 42, by 41.8 by 6.1 millimeters and the outer dimensions of the flight controller are 35.8 by 39 by 5.7 millimeters. Now I'm going to show you how to install this stack on the Flywheel Mr. Croc HD frame and connect it to the DJI Air unit. First mount the 4-in-1 ESC and solder the motors, capacitor and the battery leads. Then using the provided 8 pins harness, connect the flight controller to the 4-in-1 ESC and mount it on top of it. Connect the DC input of the DJI Air unit to the 9V output which is located on the front of the flight controller. In order to display the telemetry data on the DJI goggles, connect the TX and RX ports of the DJI Air unit to a free UART port and remember to solder the TX to RX and vice versa. Now in case you are not using the DJI radio controller, add a radio receiver and bind it to your remote controller, and in case you are using it, connect the SBUS out of the DJI Air unit to a free RX pad on the flight controller. Finally, since this is a long range setup, I've also added a GPS unit which is connected to UART4, and soon I'm going to release a separate video which is going to concentrate on this topic. After flipping the flight controller upside down, we can wrap everything up. Then activate and update the DJI Air unit if you haven't done so already. The last step is to configure the flight controller using Betaflight. And before you are going through the configuration procedure, I recommend to update the flight controller to the latest available version, which is at the moment of shooting this video, Betaflight 4.1.5. Now we can configure the flight controller. Under the ports tab, I've enabled the serial RX switch since I've connected the TBS Crossfire Nano SE receiver to yacht number 1. I've also turned on the configuration slash MSP switch next to yacht number 3 since I've connected the DJI Air unit to yacht number 3 in order to display the telemetry data. The GPS is connected to yacht number 4, so I've selected under sensor input the GPS option. And finally, in order to enable ESC telemetry, select ESC under sensor input next to yacht number 6. Now under the configuration tab, enable the ESC sensor switch in order to utilize the ESC telemetry data. I recommend to set the arming angle to 180 degrees so you can arm the quadcopter regardless of its position. Under the receiver tab, define your radio receiver. In case you are using a GPS device, enable the GPS switch and define the protocol of the GPS which is very likely to be U-Blocks. Make sure to enable the OSD switch under other features on the configuration screen in case you would like to use the custom OSD option and also define your favorite elements under the OSD tab. After binding the radio receiver with your radio transmitter, make sure that everything works properly and define your favorite flight modes. And finally, check the direction of the motors using the motors tab, of course with no propellers on, so you'll need to plug in a battery. Enable this switch next to I understand the risks. 
and now we can check the direction of the motors. So for example, motor number one needs to be reversed. So does motor number two. Motor number three is okay. And motor number four as well. Now using the BLED32 app on my Android device, I can reverse the direction of motors number one and motor number two. So first connect the flight controller either to your Windows machine or your Android device since unfortunately Mac is currently not supported. Connect the battery again with no propellers on the motors. Hit connect, read the settings and now I can scroll down and set the motor direction. So again I will need to reverse the direction of motor number one and motor number two. And now we can save the settings by hitting the right button. Now we are pretty much ready to go and all we need to do is to bind the DJI Air Unit with the DJI goggles, put the propellers in the correct direction and take off. But unfortunately due to the coronavirus situation I won't be able to show you some flight footage and hopefully soon things are going to get better and then I'm going to feature this quadcopter on a separate video. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.